So, you want to learn how to play Splatoon 2. Better yet, you want to learn how to be awesome at it, right? Say no more. Look no further than this guide right here. Other people will tell you what everybody else says is the way to play. But if you don't want to be a sheep and follow the crowd, I can be the one to walk you through becoming good at Splatoon 2 just a little bit differently. Welcome to the Eccentric Fool's Guide to Splatoon 2. So before you're even reminded what the game is called, you're brought to the character creation screen. Because Nintendo remembers that self-expression and gender identity is incredibly important in today's society. Nice selection of skin tones to pick from, up to and including blacker than your ex-girlfriend's heart. I was very tempted to pick Super Saiyan Teal or Aryan Blue for my eye color, before remembering that nobody's perfect and going with my regular eye color. For the male Inkling's hair, you have the option of picking between Slick, Afro-Caribbean, Skrillex, or Ponytails, so pick the one you feel most comfortable with. You can even pick your pants style too! I was gonna go for the running pants shorts combo, but after remembering I haven't been to the gym in over a year, I went for long shorts instead. When you're happy with your designer baby, you can jump right in! Splatoon 2 is a third-person shooter game. It's also a shooter game by Nintendo. Being by Nintendo, it's gonna have platforming elements in it. For these reasons, if you're pretty good at shooters, you're gonna get absolutely killed at this game. Luckily, the game aims to alleviate this by holding your hand through a forced tutorial stage. It's here that you learn the differences between Splatoon and other shooters. For starters, in Call of Duty, you could possibly get a lucky kill by firing a stray bullet across the map. That sh ain't gonna fly here. In Splatoon, you need to get all up in their grill to score a shot in the target. If you think the balloon is a little bitch and it's telling you to come say it to its face, you really do have to go up to its face to set it straight. If you want to look around, you could use the right stick. Or, you can imagine that the controller is your face in your hand and you physically move your controller face to the direction you want to look. Of course, if your controller face is looking where you want but the game doesn't think so, you can always press Y to set the record straight and clear up any misunderstandings between the two of you. You're gonna be playing this game for a while and you need to maintain a good relationship with it from the beginning. Here's another key difference between this game and other shooters. In most other shooters, you're a rugged, down-to-earth war veteran hardened by years of conflict. In Splatoon, you're an adolescent child who can transform at will into a squid. Being a squid grants you a multitude of different abilities such as swim through puddles of centimeters deep ink, or defying gravity, or jumping through grates and fences, and jumping. But you can't swim through another color ink. You'll barely move at all in it, and you'll slowly take damage too. What do you do in a situation like that? Crisis averted. Every weapon has a sub-weapon that uses a bit more ink that you can use by pressing R, such as splat bombs. You might be wondering, how on earth can ink destroy wooden crates? Well, have you ever heard the saying, the pen is mightier than the sword? Well, what are pens full of? Enough said. Some walls are onto your physics-defying antics and won't let you cover them with ink. So how, for example, will you get past this obstacle? Loophole abuse at its finest. After outsmarting the stage, it'll decide that it's had enough of your smartassing and finally let you back into civilization, sending you to Inkopolis Square, the freshest, most happening joint on Earth. You'll be met by a broadcast by Off The Hook, the newest, hippest pop duo of Pearl and Marina. They'll tell you which stages are available in the current rotations play on. You'll be wise to heed their words, they are literally the only knowledgeable pop stars you'll ever see, real life or otherwise. Inkopla Square is chock full of inklings who represent people from the real world, most of whom have something to say in the form of drawings. Some are remarkably well-drawn pictures. Some are remarkably well-drawn and hilarious. Some give helpful advice. Some give useless advice. Some are crappily drawn self-promotions. Some show the dislike for furries. And some are memes. Just gonna give that a fresh real quick. So you'll probably want to get out of those duds into something more fresh. I mean, everyone else is looking fresh as hell out here. Stylish glasses, Donna. Jeff, that shirt hoodie combo is clean as hell. Luckily, the gallery is right here to buy new, fresher clothing for you to wear into battle. Let's head into Jelfonzo's thread store and... Well, that was rude. Let's instead head to the shoe store, Shella Fresh, run by Bisque the Spider Crab. Huh. Should've seen that coming. At least this guy was nice about it. Let's see if we can guess if Flo the Sea Slug will sell us some hats. 
Apparently, I'm so not fresh that she could feel me coming from inside the shop. I'd be insulted, but I'd chalk that down to her being spacey as hell. So the bottom line is that to look fresh, you gotta be fresh. And to be fresh, you gotta actually play the game. So let's head online and I'll show you what to do. The main crux of Splatoon battling is the turf war. In a nutshell, you gotta cover the ground in as much of your team's color ink as possible. If you cover more ground than the other team, you win. Shooting other team members helps, but it won't necessarily count to the end. Heck, it's possible to win without scoring a single kill. Trust Nintendo to make a non-lethal shooting game. After the obligatory booyah to generate team hype, you're ready to get started. Here are a couple of rules to keep in mind while you're spraying your slime all over the place. Ha ha! Innuendo. First of all, remember to spread your ink everywhere. And I mean everywhere. Where there isn't ink, put ink there. Even late in the match, you might come across parts of the map that haven't been inked because everybody missed it. Rejoice in the fact that you're the only one who went to Specsavers, and proceed to spread your ink. Once in a while, you come across an individual who has a different idea of what the color of the floor should be to you. Here you have no choice but to cover them in ink until they explode violently. I know you want to persuade them peacefully using your words, but unfortunately, the war zone is no place for casual conversation. And finally, avoid the squid with the ridiculously overpowered paint roller at all costs. Their exterior decorating skill is too much for you. They can't be reasoned with. They walk over you with that, you're done for. Seriously, I only died to this person. What the hell? As long as you remember these three rules and remember to ink every nook, cranny, crevice, and bicycle, you'll be on your way to becoming the best of Splatoon 2 in no time. And that is how to play Splatoon 2 the eccentric way. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you want to see more of my videos as and when they come out, then subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell icon. And if you want to help me grow, be sure to share this video to anyone you think will enjoy it. This has been the Champion Eccentric, and remember, leave luck to heaven.